What is up guys? Alex or Newfound Designs here and welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be doing a bit of a tutorial on thumbnails because a couple people have been asking me how to make thumbnails or giving me some questions about it and also if I can make thumbnails for them. So I thought I would make a video or a series of videos and tutorials on how to make some, some thumbnails. So I think I'll be showing a image on screen now of the type of thumbnail we're going to be making today. It's quite a simple basic thumbnail that can be used across all different, um, these are meant for YouTube and so it can be used across all the different um, kind of categories and whatever on YouTube, you know, gaming, uh, I think I'm showing a Call of Duty Ghosts one. Um, so yeah, it can be used for gaming, uh, vlogging, um, I don't know what else is there, but um, yeah, anyway, so let's dive right into the tutorial. So you're going to want to start with a canvas which is 120, uh, 1280 1, pixels by 720 pixels wide and just blank like this. What I want to do is have a screenshot or an image in the background here, so this is going to be like an overlay style um, thumbnail. So I've got this nice image of some snowy mountains and some trees and stuff here that I just pulled off the internet. Um, I think I just googled mountains and grabbed something off there. So you're basically going to want something like that and it's going to fill the space and whatever. And then what you're going to, what you're going to want to do is create a new layer above your mountains just by clicking this new layer thing here. And then you want to go over down here to your rectangle um, rectangle tool. So, get your rectangle tool. Oh, if it isn't selected, it's down here and it might be on one of these other things, so you're just gonna need to hold down and just select the rectangle tool. All right, so once you've got the rectangle tool, you're gonna wanna draw a shape, something like this. So it's gotta be a lot longer than it is wide. Um, don't worry about the color for now, we can change that later. And I like to just change this to a smart object so you can get rid of those weird borders around the outside. So, now that you've got your uh, rectangle, what you're going to want to do is go and duplicate your rectangle. So now you have two. And then you're going to want to go and select your colors. So I think I'm going to do a white and a blue. Okay. So, I'm going to grab my rectangle back, and to change the color, you just go to Color Overlay, and then select here, and then you can mess around with this if you want. I think that's quite a nice color, or you could just go and select one from your uh, swatches up here. So, I'm going to select this color, and it won't show up at the moment because it's directly behind that one, but after you've selected your colors, so I'm just going to keep the top one white, back one blue. Once you select your colors, you're going to want to go, uh, I'm not sure what the shortcut is on Windows, I think it's Control T, but on Mac it's Command T, and this is the same as going um, on your Edit tab and then to Free Transform. And then what you're going to want to do is just, so when you go on the outside you see this little, um, curved arrow up the top there you're going to want that to pop up and you just want to turn your back layer slightly so that it kind of pops out um, the top here and the bottom over there you want to accept that and you can zoom in and just check out that it's um, right where you want it it doesn't really there's no real science behind where it goes it, um, it's purely up to personal preference so, um, now that you've got that, uh, hold, click on the bottom, the rec your rectangle back, then hold down shift, click on your rectangle front, then go down to this little uh, file icon here, hold down shift and click on that and you'll create a group with those two inside. So I'm just going to um, rename this bar or whatever you want to name it and then you can move it around without the two things being separate 
and I'm going to go down to the outer glow. And then I'm going to want to change this blend mode from screen to normal. And I'm going to change the color here to like a black. All right, and then I'm going to change the opacity down to 50. So as you can see here, it's kind of got a little bit of a border on it. You can keep it like that, or you can increase um, the spread or the size. It's really, this is again, uh, just fiddle around with it a little bit. I'm going to increase it, I think, to 30. Looks quite good. And um, as you can see, if you uncheck it and then check it again, it gives this sort of um, faded glow border around it so that it kind of pops out of the page a little bit more. So yeah. Next thing to do is to add some text. So you're going to want to go over to your text tool over here or your typing tool and you want to just click right, well it doesn't really matter where you click and then you want to type in your text. So I'm just going to write uh, mountains. All right. And then you can move this wherever you want and I am going to, you can go and change your font to whatever you want. I think I'm going to keep it with this this font here. It's called Bebas, Bebas New. Um, I really like this font. It's kind of, uh, I feel like it's a better version of Impact. I think that's a standard font or Arial Black. I, I really like it. I think it's quite, quite good. And then if you want to make it bigger, uh, the text bigger or longer, Use the same technique to expand this so you can go to your free transform. And then I'm going to again use shift and alt and just expand it a little bit. So you can move it around uh, with your arrow keys or just your cursor. And I'm going to put it, try and center it in the middle there. Uh, I'm now going to open up the layer styles again and go to color overlay and I'm going to select the same color that I used for the background here and that kind of gives this effect that um, I'm going to click OK and OK and it kind of gives this effect that it's kind of cut out of uh, the white, the white's being cut and it shows the blue behind. Now I'm also going to add a inner shadow here which, uh, which I'm going to use to kind of emphasize that cutout effect. So I'm going to set the opacity to 50 so it's not so bold. And then really you just mess around the settings here, see what you like. Uh, I think I'm going to set this uh, to about, yeah, 8 looks nice. Um, you know, you can mess with this sort of, all these different things, the distances and choke here, kind of. Do what you want, but I think that looks pretty good. I'd say you can uh, zoom in here with your t uh, zoom tool on the bottom. Have a look at it up close. So once you're happy with that, um, yeah, it looks great. All right. So once you're happy with that, you can you can move on to some effects for this image. Uh, you can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna just add a little bit of a darken kind of shadow effect around the border here so it kind of emphasizes your text in the middle so what you're going to want to do is create a layer just above your mountains by just clicking on your mountains and then clicking the new layer so once you've done that you're going to want to go to click on the bucket hold it down and open up your gradient tool and up in your gradients here you're going to want to create a clear um, gradient there and black there. So the way I usually do this is just go to this preset and then I drag this bar and this bar. Like I make them opposite. And so once you got that you can click OK and you can click on somewhere around the middle. You can pull out rulers to get exact middle but I think it's kind of, it doesn't really matter. You can just do it by um, eye. So I think that's about the middle there. Hold down shift and drag your um, little line here, your gradient line, up just above the image here. And then you can let go. 
and it creates this kind of dark effect. Now I think that's a bit too dark, so I'm just going to open up the opacity on that layer and change it to around 50. So as you can see when you check and uncheck that layer, it kind of emphasizes this uh, mountains thing in the middle here. So next, if you want to add any other images, so say I've got this camera image here, Ooh. and say you want to add this image here because that's like maybe your logo or you just want to add an image or something just to add to your piece. You can simply drag this in or go, go on Google and type in, say for this I typed in camera.png and that should give you an image with no sort of background on it so you don't have to take anything off it. But say you um, you pick up an image and it's got a white or colored border around it. What you're going to want to do for this is I um, usually just rasterize the layer then I go to the quick select tool, the magic wand and I click on the white area and usually it will select it all for you and then you could just click the delete button and go onto select and deselect and you should have your image without a background. Um, that works in most cases. Sometimes the borders aren't quite uh, aren't easy enough for the magic wand tool to find. There are ways of getting around that, but I usually stick to images that um, are in PNG form that you don't have to take the background off. That's usually easier. So I'm just going to keep this camera up in the corner there. And also, if you want um, to include, not to include, but make this uh, bar in the middle uh, blend more into the background or not pop out as much, you can drag the layer that you've used for that kind of fade, just drag it above um, your, your bar and you can kind of see it fades in as well with the background. Um, I personally don't like this, but that is of course up to you. So yeah, what else can we do here? If you want, you can add other text and stuff. So you can say episode numbers, or you can, you know, buy uh, newfound. Just stick that under there, or you can make another tab like this, uh, another bar, and you can stick that under there, make it smaller. Uh, it's really up to you. There's a lot of creativity that can go into this. You can really do whatever you want. The colors, the background. Um, you can come up with some pretty awesome stuff. And yeah, you can move it around, get multiple of these bar sort of things going on. And you can come up with some really nice backgrounds. And it's really not too difficult to do. Uh, so that is pretty much all from me, guys. I hope you liked the tutorial. hope you liked the video. Uh, it's the first time I have done a tutorial. So I hope it was good. Uh, give me any tips or some guides um, how I could be better or clearer. Uh, let me know what you think of the thumbnail design. If you use it, feel free to message me, um, link me to the video or the image. So I'd really love to see you guys using this design um, in your videos and just practically. So uh, that's pretty much, yeah, that's it from me. And uh, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time. Alright.